Hi, George here. And today I'll be showing you how to remove a shadow from a face. I'm sure you've all had this problem. You take a real nice picture, somebody's wearing a hat, and you don't think about that shadow. But when you get home, you take a look at the picture. There's this big nasty shadow in there kind of blocking the face. Now, this is an easy fix to do, but it takes a little bit of finessing, a little bit of careful control with some tools. Now, I'll be showing you just what you need for this particular repair. But if you want to learn a lot more about how to use these tools that I'll be showing in this video, the best place to do that is with my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. Okay, let's go ahead and get started on this project. I'll just get this out of the way. There we go. Here's the finished photo. I'll just remove all of this stuff in here, delete all those layers, and take us back to the original image right there. Now, if you want to work along with the same picture, I have a link for this in the description. Our first step here is to go over here on the layers, right-click where it says background and duplicate layer, choose OK, and then hide the original. We'll be changing the pixels in here, so you want to make sure that you have a protected safe copy just in case things get messed up. You can always go back to that and then start over again at that point. All right, the first thing we have to do is to get rid of all of these nasty light spots in here. That's the biggest problem. Let's zoom in. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. If you don't have that set up, that's over here, edit. Come down to Preferences, General, and it's right here, Zoom with Scroll Wheel. And we'll be using two tools to take out these spots. The first one over here, under Enhance, this is the Spot Healing Tool. Now I'm using Photoshop Elements 2025, and there's a new tool over here called the Remove Tool. This does not work for this project. You want to use the Spot Healing Tool. And then come in here, find a nice brush size. You want your brush to be a soft edge brush, not a hard edge brush. I like it at proximity match. You can also try content aware, but I found that in most cases, the proximity match gives you the best results. So I really don't change off of that one. The size right now is 50 pixels, and that's just a good size to go over and cover one of those spots. Then it's to be click on the spot, and it takes it out. You may have to click a couple of times, and sometimes it'll do things like that where you get the wrong texture coming in. Just use Control Z to back up, and I recommend just going someplace else, then going back over to that spot. Sometimes that works. If it's still not quite right, we'll take care of that in the second pass in here. Again, sometimes this doesn't work out that well. So just go through and get what you can. And what doesn't work, we'll come back and fix it with a clone stamp tool. With this tool, you also can do a brush like that. But I found oftentimes that's not as good as just a regular click like that right there. OK, Control Z. You can see what it's doing. It's grabbing something from someplace else in the image and using that and patching that over. So again, not always a perfect tool, especially on really bright spots like this. Control Z to undo that one. So do the best you can with this. And then we'll come back and we'll clean things up. With the clone stamp tool. You can change your brush size using the left or the right square bracket keys. And bring this down a little bit like that. Now over here, we have these spots that are just a little ways away from the hairline. These are okay. I'll do these. I prefer using up against the hairline, the clone stamp tool, because if you come in here and try to do this, you'll frequently get some weird stuff happening where it doesn't go away. What was the clone stamp tool for that? You see here how it actually copied over some hair. You don't want that happening, so we'll save that for the clone stamp tool. And just take your time and go through and catch all the spots. Now I'll spend a few more minutes taking out these spots with this tool. So I'm just going to pause the video right now. I'll finish with this tool. Then I'll bring the video back up again and we'll do some clone stamp work. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Let's now zoom in over here and let's take care of the tricky stuff up against the hairline. And for that, again, I'll be using the clone stamp tool. And once again, I'm using a soft edge brush on this. So if you come in here, find a place you want to copy from, hold the Alt key down and click, then move where you want to copy to and paste. And this will give you a real nice, very careful ability to come in here and do some real nice clean adjustments in here, some clean photo retouching with very little obvious problems or glitches. So just take your time again on this, and I'll just be working down, just going straight down the line here. I go up a little bit, Alt and click, and then come down a little bit, find my new position, and then click into there. And I'll frequently reset that starting point. This oftentimes will give you a better result than the spot healing tool, but it's a little bit more work, a little more time consuming. I always try the spot healing brush first just to make it as easy as possible. Okay, that's pretty good. A few more little spots in here to clean up or I had some odd texture things happening. There we go. And I think we just about have this cleaned up where I want it. 
Now I can take a lot longer on this one step and really come in here and nitpick, which I might do on a finished piece, but I won't do on this video just to keep things moving along at a good pace. Okay, there's our first step. It's already much better. You see right there without those spots, it removes a lot of that effect of there being a shadow on the face. Okay, now we have kind of a mask in here. You see a line right along in here and up over here and right in here. And that's caused by the shadow of the brim of the hat coming along the face. And for this, we make a very careful selection. Now, this is the one spot where you need to really be careful and take your time at this. I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool. I have my feathering set at four pixels. I want a nice soft edge on this. And I'll be making a selection clear around the face. And then I'll follow the line of the shadow along here, back over here a little bit, and kind of see right down there. And along over here, around the nose, and over on this side, and then try to follow the shadow line along here. And then back around to the top. So a very slow, very careful selection on this. There's no fast way to do this one step. And it's just a matter of coming in and using this tool to create your selection. And then once that's finished, we'll take this off to the next step. Now, when you get down by the hair, I like coming in just a little ways into the hair. That can help to hide where that edge is. The edge of the hair kind of confuses the eye and you won't see where that edge. So just come along and go right next to the edge of the face in here, just inside the hairline. And I'll come down and do just a little bit of this down towards the bottom and then I'll finish this selection off camera. I'll get right down here, just come right along that edge. There we go and then try to find where that shadow is along here and follow that edge. Now, don't take it clear down to here because part of that shadow is natural shadow from the face. What we care about is the part where the hat is actually creating the shadow and that's right along this line here. Okay, I'll take it over just over the top of the nose and then I'll pause at that point and then finish this selection off camera. So again, right up along the edge here and take it over the top. Now with this tool, make sure you don't click too quickly or you can lose your selection. And I'll pause right here and then I'll bring the video back up again as soon as I have this selection finished. Okay, we're back again and there is the selection. Let's now go up here to Layer and New and Layer via Copy. And here's our copied layer. We can now lighten that up. And I really get a good sense of this. I'll back off just a little bit. It helps actually. Like that. And let's recenter our picture. That looks pretty good. Back to the Move tool. And then go up here to Layer. Come down to New Adjustment Layer and Levels right there. Where it says Use Previous Layer. Check that. Choose OK. And we'll be dealing mostly with the center control right here. This is our mid-tones. So push that to the left a little bit. And you can see that lightens up that whole area. Now I'm going a little bit too far for right down here. That's fine. I'm not going far enough for over here. We'll take care of both of those in just a little bit and try to find a spot in here where you're really knocking down most of that shadow. We can't get rid of the real hard shadow here yet, but we'll soften that up, this spot up in just a bit. But I think that's pretty good for bringing the basic face tones in here, looking as a better match for the rest of the face. So we'll go with that. That's only a 1.15. So it's a very, very small move in here, actually. Close that down. Now we lost just a little bit of saturation in here, a little color saturation as we lighten that up. So let's take care of that as well. Layer, come down to new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Again, check that checkbox, choose okay. And give it a little bit more saturation, just a touch. Notice how that really began to hide that difference in here. Okay, that's looking real nice. Now we need some layer merging, but just in case, in case you need to back up and do a bit more work in here, I'm going to select all of these layers, right click, and let's duplicate these layers. Choose OK. There we go. Now, if you're in a later version of Photoshop Elements, go ahead and just hit this Create Layer Group and hide all that stuff in that one layer group. We can then hide that layer group and then select these layers right here. And we'll merge these layers, right click and merge layers. And then merge these two layers, do these as separate moves, right click and merge layers again. So now all that work has been merged into this layer. See how we're doing? I'll hide that, looking a lot better already. 
Okay, now just a little bit of tweaking. I want to soften down this edge problem right here. I want to soften down that nose line and soften down the line over here. And we'll do that with a combination again of the spot healing brush and the clone stamp tool. So we'll start with the spot healing brush. Now let's brush right over here and see what we get. Okay, that does not work at all. Control Z, let's get out of that. Let's try just tapping that. Still not working too well. Let's try it up here. Again, not working out very well. So what I think I'll do in all of these is to use the clone stamp tool instead. And this will bring my opacity down about halfway, 50% right there. And then let's just clone a little bit of this over that line or from down here and up just a little bit. And just soften that line up. A little larger on the brush. There we go. Again, click out down here someplace. Just a little bit right along that edge. And that just hides where that line is. The same thing over here on the nose. Just a little bit down here. And I'm using that soft edge brush and a lower opacity. And that helps to hide where we're doing this adjustment in here. Just kind of softens it up. And that's all we're trying for is just to soften out where that line is so it's not as noticeable and to slowly work up into that line and help to soften that down. Okay, that's looking much, much better now. Let's do a little bit right over here. We don't need much in here, just a touch. And I think we're good over here. Let's now lighten the whole picture up just a little bit. Go back up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, levels, check that checkbox, choose okay. Same thing we did before. We'll lighten up the mid-tones like that. And this time I'll bring in a little bit more contrast. There we go. Right side and left side, just a little bit. And I think that's looking pretty good right there. And once again, just a little bit more saturation. Layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. Just a hint, more saturation, not much, just a real small amount. And there we go. Let's now see how this looks. I'm going to control zero to go back to fit screen. So here is the original and here's our lightened up improved version, original and improved version. And I think that's a markedly better photograph. It just takes a little attention to detail and you can take out those shadows. Now again, I touched on a lot of tools here, a lot of techniques. If you want to learn more about how to use those, the best place to get that information is from my complete training course. And I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. If you don't want to miss any videos in the future, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's the best way to keep from losing the channel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.